Mm, this one, I like this question. Okay. Why do people call heart disease a man's disease? In all honesty, I don't know why it's called a man's disease because actually... Hi, I'm Dr. Yi from Pantai Hospital, Kuala Lumpur. I'm a cardiologist and I specialize in conditions of the cardiovascular system, from your heart to your arteries. Today, I'll be answering some common questions about your heart health. Just don't ask me how to mend a broken heart. I'm only in my 20s, 30s, so I don't have to worry about developing heart disease, right? Well, this couldn't be further from the truth. Heart disease is a very progressive disease. When we talk about coronary artery disease, it actually takes 20, 30, 40 years to develop significant coronary blockages. Heart disease will actually begin very much in your early teens and only manifests itself clinically when you hit the 40s or 50s. In fact, if you looked at our practice nowadays, we're seeing more and more patients who are coming in and presenting at an earlier age. I've seen patients who have had heart attacks even in their 20s. So, is it true that as long as you aren't overweight, your risk of developing heart disease is low? Well, it's true that obesity is a risk factor. But that said, there are many other risk factors that can contribute to heart disease. There are many people, for example, who are very slim, who have very high cholesterol levels or high blood pressure or even uh, have diabetes who are at risk of heart disease. So just because you are not overweight doesn't mean that you are not at risk of heart disease. Okay, hmm, this one, I like this question. Okay, uh, my relatives say taking supplements like fish oil daily can help prevent heart disease. Does this really work? Well, it's true that many of my patients actually prefer to take their supplements rather than take the medications that are prescribed by their doctors. There's this belief that supplements are safer because they're more natural. To be honest, my take on it is that most of these supplements don't really work. Supplements such as fish oil, red yeast and Q10 are very common supplements that some patients take for their heart disease. But in actual fact, there's actually very little research or proven research data that supports that these medications are beneficial. That said, if you come back to the issue of fish oil in particular, all the evidence in randomized controlled trials have shown that it is no better than placebo. The only studies that have shown that fish oil is beneficial in heart disease is actually um, the studies where they use very high fish oil levels. They're looking at like four grams of EPA. Studies using four grams of EPA daily have been shown to reduce your cardiovascular risk by 25%. But unfortunately, most of the conventional supplements that you can buy off the shelf do not have that kind of dosage. So I would actually advise most patients to actually listen to their doctors and take their regular medications rather than supplements. So what are some minor heart disease symptoms that people often overlook? Okay, when somebody thinks of heart disease, they always often think of chest pains. It does the classical symptoms that most people are aware of, but that may not be always the case. Uh, in fact, in many instances, Patients may come in with a variety of symptoms. In fact, I had patients who actually been complaining of indigestion all weekend and then they come to the hospital after the weekend on a Monday morning and when I assessed them, found out that they actually had a full-blown heart attack maybe 48 hours earlier. Uh, they were lucky to be alive because they have just been thinking all this while that this is just a gastric issue and they've been popping gastric medicines and tests over the weekend to no avail. The important thing is that any symptoms that affects you in terms of your chest, whether it's chest pain, difficulty breathing, shortness of breath, even palpitations, irregular heartbeats, or sometimes it may be a slight ache or discomfort. Please see your doctor, it could be your heart. There's also a certain group of patients who might even present with what we call a silent heart attack. They may not have any symptoms at all. In fact, 20% of diabetics may have what we call silent heart attacks. What do we mean by that? Uh, they may present, for example, to the emergency department being unwell, sweating, cold sweats, blood pressure may be low, they're short of breath, but they don't have classical chest pains. And when we do an electrocardiogram and run some blood tests, and it turns out positive for a heart attack. Why do people call heart disease a man's disease? In all honesty, I don't know why it's called a man's disease because actually it's equally common both in men and women. Uh, of course, it's the number one cause of death in men. Uh, most people know that, but it's also the number one cause of death in women. More women die from heart disease than they do from, for example, breast cancer. So I think the perception that heart disease is a man's disease is partly because women often present with atypical features. So when you think of a heart attack, 
typical symptoms that one experiences would be the central crushing chest pains, heaviness and tightness that grow, goes up to the jaw, down the left arm. Now, women, they present sometimes with very atypical symptoms. Their symptoms may be more vague. It might be a mild discomfort. It might be just difficulty breathing and short of breath with some sweating. Maybe sometimes they present with arm aches. Uh, so the symptomatology is slightly different and therefore so, uh, that might lead to the physician that's attending to the patient to miss the diagnosis or there might be a delay in making the diagnosis leading to a late treatment. So there's a perception therefore that you know, heart disease is more common than men but actually it's been missed quite often in women. At what age should I start screening for heart disease? I think that's a very good question because this is something that I get asked all the time in my clinical practice. People asking me, when should I start uh, screening? When would depend partly on your risk profile. So if you're at higher risk, I would certainly advise you to screen at an earlier age and at more frequent intervals. But generally speaking, most people would advocate screening for heart disease from the age of above 40 for men and maybe above the age of 45, 50 for women. But of course, if you're high risk, meaning if you have multiple risk factors, you've got strong family history, you're a diabetic, uh, if your siblings had heart attacks before, then you may want to start at an earlier age. I would even start screening from the age of 30 and above. However, if you're talking about general screening, for example, if you look at the guidelines for cholesterol screening, you know, most guidelines would recommend doing your cholesterol check at the age of 20, and then you can do your cholesterol check if it's normal once every five years or so. Same thing with high blood pressure. The guidelines do advocate checking your blood pressure at the age of 18, and then doing blood pressure check every two to three years thereafter as well. Want to know more about how to take care of your heart? I'll be sharing more about how to spot heart disease early on at BFM's Health and Living segment. Check out the link below.